Introducing the new Intern 2.0. This new model is standing at a lanky 6 feet and 2 inches and carrying the newest and best features including chair stacking capabilities. Horrible puns. You know, I'm a big fan of whiteboards. I find them remarkable. Man. That's right. This new intern model has all the bells and whistles including hidden features such as a balloon popping ability and the inability to perform even the most basic athletic feats. But wait, there's more. The intern 2.0 also comes with an abundance of siblings. Not four, not six, but eight additional siblings to add spice and excitement to the intern 2.0 experience. Disclaimer, we are not responsible for any awkward and weird interactions between you and the intern 2.0. You are homeschooled and lack social abilities. Also, any diabolical plans to steal the current junior high's pastor job are entirely unintentional and we cannot be held liable for any actions as a result of these plans. Alright, so I'm here intern 2.0. Here's Sam Bean here. Yeah! That's my sister right there, in case you didn't know. That's one of the seven. That's one of the eight. That's one of the eight. Yeah. You're not fully yeah. yeah. He's great. Sam Bean's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for interning with Sam Yeah. Anytime. Overworked and underpaid. Perfect. Always. All right. I need three adult volunteers. Three oh, adult volunteers. Three adult volunteers. We are playing a game that does not involve anything gross or anything like that. It's called Two Truths and a Lie. Here. Alright, here's what we're doing. We're playing a game called Two Truths and a Lie. Who's heard of this game? Okay, so, so each one of you are going to tell two truths and a lie. And then you guys, the kids, when they're all done, will try to pick who's lying. Got that? Got that? Okay, so start thinking. Start thinking of your truths. Start thinking of your lies. Put them in any order you want. Don't go in. Yeah. Alright, we'll give you five, ten more seconds. Yeah. Okay, ready. Okay, ready. Eric, you're ready? Oh, wait, you get a number. Eric, you're number two. You're in the middle. Ladies first. Ladies first. Tucker, bring it in the bronze. Alright, are you ready? Okay. Alright. Alright. I was born in Mexico. Listen. In Mexico. I've gone on three cruises and I used to live in Florida. Okay. Keep those in mind. Ooh. Got them? Alright, Eric. Mr. Eric. I was born in 68 and I was a 15 pound baby. I once played poker with the uh, Atlanta Braves uh, team, and uh, I was swimming with the Dolphins in the white. Oh, that's four. I've been in a movie. I've been to the westernmost part of the United S continental United States. Liar! <laughs> Colton. <laughs> <laughs> and I have broken both of my arms. At the same time? Not at the same time. <laughs> I got Andrew Brooks. Andrew Brooks. Yeah. Andrew, Brooks. Andrew Brooks has broken both of his arms at the same time. Get him to tell that story one time. That is the truth. All right. If you think Cindy's, who thinks Cindy? Let's do. What do you? Who thinks Cindy is lying? She's one. never been on a cruise before. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Sorry, I said that online. She has never. Because I know that number three is correct. You know that number three is correct. I know that number three is correct. I know that number three is correct. I know that number three is correct. Unless she lied about it. Alright, who, think, who <laughs> thinks Eric has, was a 15 pound baby? I believe it. I believe it. Wow. If you just Google it, Eric, Google it. Eric, I believe he played a husband with Leonard Ray. I believe that. 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 I believe that.
He swam with the dolphins in Hawaii. He was one of his also. That's true. So, he just went on the Alright, who thinks Tucker was in a movie? Not me. 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 Not one of his. Come stand by Tucker. We'll figure out what his truth and lies were. If you think Eric's lying about one of his, come stand by Mr. Eric. I don't know how I would feel about this. I don't know how it up, but that's okay. If you think Cindy's lying about one of hers, Tucker. Everyone should Yeah, I know. It's okay. Hey, I'm glad the pastor's got everybody believing he's lying. The pastor's a liar. I'm lying about one. He's lying about one. one. Each person's lying about one. Maybe the pastor shouldn't play this game, right? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Tucker was in a movie. He broke both his arms. And okay. he's been through the most. Yeah, that part. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tucker, what's your, what, let's ask the kids. What do you think his lie is? The movie. The movie. All right, Tucker, what's your lie? Movie. The lie was. I've broken both of my arms. That's what I said! I have never broken a bone in my body. We need to be. Alright, yeah. today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Alright, what is your lie? The way home. The way home. Oh, that's your lie. Alright, what's your lie? 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 Alright, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Eric, Eric, I want to know how big the baby were. How big is the lot? The lot. The lot was a 15 pound baby. Yeah, I knew it! And the uh, truth is, I played poker with the last baby. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. How big the baby were? 13 pounds, 13 pounds, baby. All right, Cindy, what was your life? Oh, wait, we let them guess. We let them guess. What do you think your life was? You can't tell. Did you tell? You were born in Mexico? She was not born in Mexico, but she has lived in Florida. And what was your other one? She's been on three cruises. Who's ever been on a cruise? Nope. I have a Tyler. I have no idea. I've never been on a cruise. I want to go. Let's go, Tyler. Let's do it. All right. Okay, thanks for flying. Two trips in a lot. I kind of messed up. That's okay. What's up? Come here. We got it. We got it. All right, Sam, you ready? Let me move. Let me get this stuff off here. I'm going to clear the stage for you. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Woo! Yeah! All right, I'm going to Let me pray for you before we start. And then, uh, have fun with the message, young man. I felt like I gotta thank you for Sam and his heart of just uh, to teach God and just to uh, speak to these kids. Uh, God, I ask that you uh, speak through him, that these kids hear your message through him, and just thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. First and most important, I'm Sam. You saw my video. I have a lot of siblings, but I don't know your names. I'm learning them. I'm getting there. I've been here a few weeks, if you've noticed me, but I don't know your names. So on the count of three, I need all of y'all to yell your names at me, okay? One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, I got this. I know everyone's name. Now, my first question is, is Isabel Johnson here? No. She's not here today? We have a second service for Okay, okay. Just making sure. All right, so, I've got a question for you guys. How many of y'all have ever been camping? Are we camping? Wait, are we talking about landing or... No, camping, camping. Oh, camping. Oh, no, no, camping. Now, here's a little, little tidbit about me. I was a Boy Scout. So, anybody else here Boy Scouts? I know a few of y'all, yes, yeah, okay. 
Close enough. Close enough. Asset. Okay, so I was a Boy Scout, and one of the biggest things Boy Scouts do is we like to camp. And when I to say camp, I don't mean like, you know, go out to your backyard with a tent and, you know, you have your drinks in your cooler and when you get tired, you can go inside your bed. I'm talking about one camp out, we went all the way out to New Mexico. And I don't know if you know anything about New Mexico, but it's big and there's not a lot of people. And we went out to like this huge campsite. Like this thing was big and we backpacked. So we had all of our food, our clothes, our tent on one little teeny backpack, and we hiked with it, right? And so I get to this camp, and I'm already a little nervous because this is a 12-day camping trip. This isn't like a weekend. This is 12 days, almost two weeks of walking in the woods, right? And I get there, and I'm like, all right, this is a little bit scary. Like, you know, the nearest help is a day away and 100 miles, and we're out in the middle of nowhere. We have no phones, no electronics, no buildings, no air conditioning. If we need help, we got to help ourselves. And then they start telling me about the bears and the snakes and the spiders and the mountain lions. And I'm like, this is scary. Like, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's not like we have anything to protect ourselves. And so, honestly, like, I was with a group of people. But that group of people, we were pretty alone. We had these tiny little tents. And that's it. So I was kind of scared, kind of alone. Kind of worried, um, and that's where I was at. And honestly, we've all kind of been there, right? Maybe you haven't gone on a huge camping trip, but maybe you started a new class, or maybe your parents left you with a babysitter you didn't know, and you're like, "This is weird." Or you know, maybe you watched a scary movie, maybe something you weren't supposed to watch, and you're up there at night, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, the monsters are here." Either way, we've all been scared, right? Like, you've all, you've all been scared or worried or something, right? Talk to me here. Talk to me. Okay, yeah. We've all felt like that. Um, but we can also feel that way with God sometimes, too, right? Maybe you've been praying for a long time for something and he hasn't answered. Um, or maybe you had a really hard week. Or maybe school's really hard for you. Um, and you're like, God, are you even there? Um, and that's okay, because everyone struggles with that sometimes. I struggle with that. Mr. Corey struggles with that. Tucker struggles with that. And also, people in the Bible struggled with that. Sometimes they wondered if God was there. Um, so now, I have a question. Who remembers the promise God gave to Abraham? Who can tell me? Alright, I guess it's time. Oh, that God would stay with him forever and that he would have dozens and dozens of hundreds of kids, and then they would bless the earth, and they would all be blessed with Awesome, perfect, yes. He said he would stay with Abraham, and he would have so many kids, you couldn't even count them. And so Abraham had a kid, does anybody remember Abraham's kid that received Isaac. the promise? Isaac. Isaac had a kid, does anybody remember Isaac's kid that received the promise? Jacob. Number two, Jacob. Jacob. And here comes Jacob, instead of having one kid to get the promise, he pops out 12. 12 brothers. Now that's a lot of brothers. I don't know how many brothers or sisters. Like, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, but I don't even have 12. That's a lot. So, can we give a warm welcome to Joseph? I think we have a special like this. I think Joseph's here. Like, yeah. everybody give it up for Joseph. Oh, yeah, Joseph. Yeah. All right, okay. So, uh, hey, Joseph, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, my friends, you know, my friends call me Joe, um, but please call me Joseph. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Joseph, I was wondering if you could maybe help us retell your story a little bit. Go through that. Well, like, uh, you, you want me to retrace some of the most painful memories of my past? Yeah, sure, whatever. I guess I can do that. Uh, okay. So, Joseph, can you pick a few people from the crowd to yeah, kind of help retell yeah, the sure. re retell Let's story? See, I, need, I need some brothers. Uh, here's one of my brothers right here. Oh yeah, you're the one that tried to push me in the well. That's cool. Um, yeah, you, you're the other one. Okay, come on up here, brother. I need one more brother to represent my 12, 11 other brothers. Come on, Hammer and Hank. All right, brothers. You guys, uh, you guys come up here, over here. 
Here. This is not corn for you. It's not corn. You're gonna steal it anyway. You're one of my brothers, anyways. All right. All right. Well, as we said, Joseph, twelve brothers. Um. And let's just say one day, Joseph was out in the field. He had some flocks. Kind of saw his brothers doing something they weren't really supposed to, and. Joseph was a bit of a tattletale and kind of told his dad on all of his brothers. Cool. Hey, we're in the wheat fields. Here, we're in the fields. We're in the fields. Hey, you guys have to stand up. Stand up. Think. Hey, you guys are being mischievous. So I can go tattletale. And I'm proud of that, by the way. I'm proud of being a tattletale. All right. Justice. Justice is served. All right. We're going to tell my dad. Tell my dad. <laughs> well, as you can see, probably a little bit of tension. I don't know how y'all feel when your brother or sister tattles on you, but it doesn't exactly uh, make things go over well. And uh, honestly, Jacob, their dad, didn't make things better. You see, Genesis chapter 37, verse 3, it says, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. I'm Ouch. the favorite. I'm the favorite. It's cool. Ouch, that hurts. You see, Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his other brothers, and he made this pretty obvious. You see that that nice jacket? Now, now in the story, it's a multicolored jacket. We can use our imagination, but this is a nice jacket that he gave his son, and none of the other sons had the jacket. So every time they saw Joseph in that jacket, they got to remember that Joseph was the favorite and not them. And so it says... They hated Joseph. They couldn't even speak one kind word to him. Um, couldn't speak one kind word. <laughs> Come on. Are you guys nice brothers? Oh, you're not supposed. No, you're not supposed to be kind. You're supposed to be mean. Um, you I, your hair like is ugly. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of teeth are those? What kind of teeth are those? <laughs> What's what you got? What are you gonna say so I can tell Dad? Well, you'll do it. Why, why are you saying that? Yeah, why do I? What about you? Hey, Rick? You're so good at it. Why are your legs so hairy? <laughs> oh, no. 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 Oh
Um, but one of his brothers, Reuben, tried to save him. You see, he said, don't spill any of his blood. Throw him into his empty well here in the desert, but don't harm him yourselves. Reuben said that so that he could come back later and pull him out of the well, hopefully. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure uh, that's, that's the only brother that I really like. He's, he's a good brother. And I think they named a sandwich after him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, just as planned, along came Joseph wearing his fabulous robe, and the brothers ripped it right off of him and threw him straight in the well. Going. I'm trying. And guess what they did after they threw Joseph in the well? They killed him. No, they walked away. They sat down to eat their meal. Behind you. I guess. You know, throwing somebody in a well, leaving them for dead, kind of works up an appetite. I don't, I don't know. But, as they were eating, they saw Ishmaelite traders headed that way. And they were on their way to Egypt. One of the brothers had an idea. He said, what will we gain if we kill our brother and try to cover up what we've done? Come, let's sell him to these traders. Isn't that so... Brotherly. Yes. Yeah. And so the brothers tied him up, took him to the traders, and off he went. How much am I worth? So you want a million dollars? Oh, a million? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I was saying. I didn't tell you for nothing. You too much trouble. Alright, off they go. Alright, everybody give up a hand for our volunteers. Thank you so much. Y'all are diabolical. No, you can just keep them. We back. We back. Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Awesome. Now, selling his brother might have been awful. They also destroyed his robe. Brothers took that painful reminder that Joseph was the favorite and dipped it in goat's blood, kind of tore it up, made it look like an animal had, you know, killed him, um, and they took it to their father, right? And so Jacob recognized it. He said, it's my son's robe. A wild animal has eaten him up. Joseph must have been torn to pieces. So now his brothers have backstabbed him. His father thinks he's dead, and he's being carried away as a slave to a whole other country. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Joseph was probably scared. He was terrified, and he was the favorite, so he always got whatever he wanted, and now he's in a situation where he has nothing. He's far from home, abandoned, backstabbed by his brothers, um, and honestly, he was probably just totally alone. Or so it seemed, right? But Joseph's story wasn't over. He wasn't alone, actually. Check this out. Genesis 39, 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph. He gave him great success. Joseph lived in Potiphar's house. So even when Joseph was at the bottom, at the bottom of the well, at the bottom of everybody else, God was with him, right? He wasn't alone. And God helped him. It said... The Lord was with him, and he had great success. And you all want to know something really awesome? God's with every single one of y'all, too. Right? But if you're like me, sometimes you forget. Like I talked earlier, you get scared, you get worried. You're into a new area of life, um, and things start changing, and you get worried. Um, and honestly, what we got to do is something that Jesus did. No, no, Jesus, the perfect Son of God who came down and died for us. He was scared too. He would get worried. He was afraid. He was angry. But you know what he did whenever that happened? He prayed. He prayed and he asked God. He said, remind me who you are. Let me know who you are. So next time you're feeling alone, next time you're worried, you're afraid, you're angry, you're upset, whatever it is, pray to God. 
Ask him to remind you who he is. Ask him to remind you that he's there. And he will. He's there for you guys. And he's not ever going to leave you alone. And that's his promise. His promise to Abraham and his promise to us. And honestly, it's a pretty good, great promise if uh, you ask me. So, moving on from here, when y'all get into groups, I want y'all to think about this question right here. What does it look like to trust in God? Right? It may look different for y'all. It may be a different thing. If you're a guy or a girl or fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. But what is it like for you guys to trust in God? And uh, once again, let's throw up the memory verse we have up here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. So, let's pray. God, thank you so much that we can trust in you. Even when we're at the very bottom, Lord, you are here for us. Um, help us to remember that, Lord. You are good, you are great, you are awesome, and you love us so, so much. I pray that we have a great week at school, um, and that we make great choices for you. Amen. Amen.